Hello friends and enemies, welcome back to Happy For Now. It's me, Isabel, here with a really fun collab video. So this kicks off the summer of collabs that I'm doing with Tamika over at Tamika's Library, where we're having various friends across the booktube world join us in doing collab videos. So I feel like they don't do this a lot outside of the romance community where we like drop the same video on the same day and like collab that way since like, you know, we're all not in the same places. Today's video, we are collabing with Jess from Jess Owens, who I adore. Jess and I, we have fun together. We have fun together. I always enjoy Jess. She's such a fun time. She does the book community, which is like, I feel like the sister to my Romance Landia Monthly. Um, you know, it's just, I adore Jess. Uh, we don't, we, re we have crossover in our reading, but not a ton. Um, but she's just an absolute gem of a human. And uh, I can't wait for her to move back to the States so I can go visit her. I already told her I was crashing <laughs> when she gets settled. I was like, I'm going to visit. And she said, all right. And I said, no, for real, I'm going to visit. So uh, I'm sure her and her partner come visit me up here too in Tennessee. Uh, they're more than welcome to. But yeah, so today's collab I felt like was a good one. This is partially inspired by the fact that like Jess read Zodiac Academy and like rant reviewed it and it cracked me up and then she joined me on the chapter three podcast with Bethany that I co-host uh she also rants about it and um it just inspired me by books that betrayed me so by this I mean books that I expected a lot out of and got nothing zero absolutely no fulfillment from and I <laughs> I hate this so much <laughs> when this happens but these are all books that for me were big disappointments I do have a range of books for this one that are romance and non-romance so that's fun and I'm just gonna tell you why they disappointed me and didn't work for me at the end of the day so uh we're gonna kick it off with a romance one that is a sequel I waited an eternity for so I read um Belle Aurora's first book I cannot remember what it is called now or the first book in the series and it was so good and it ended in a cliffhanger so it wasn't actually a romance because like romances have to have that happily ever after right and then finally Raw came out I think it was Raw the third book and I read that and I was just pissed like I was so mad y'all like what on earth so we end on this cliffhanger thing where like they can't be together because like of his criminal background and we come to Raw where she's like raising their child by herself and he just moves in across the street? No. there It just doesn't work. And then there's like no payoff for this buildup of a relationship where like you were rooting for them to figure it out in the first freaking book. And then you take years to come out with a sequel and it's not even good. I hate it here. I hate it. Uh, next, let's talk about a booktube book talk fave. Um, one that a lot of my friends loved and I was like there's no way I'm not gonna like this it sounds like my kind of like campy not always the best fantasy romance boy did I not expect to see like weird racism and QAnon style conspiracies in this book but we sure freaking did that is from Berletta Nash like it <laughs> the entire like I'm gonna spoil this book so I'm sorry, um, but I feel like if you're here, you might want to know this if you haven't read it yet. The entire end of that book is like massive round of like current right wing slash semi current right wing conspiracies, eating babies, blood magic shit to like live forever. Um, it was so bad. It was so bad and I was already annoyed because like all these fan artists kept like skinny washing Poppy who's like curvy apparently and then like the the author Jennifer L. Armentrout was like well um you know this character is a, a person of color and I'm like are they though like you didn't even describe their skin tone in any capacity you just like you didn't describe anybody's skin tone it's, it's not a Katie Robert who doesn't treat whiteness as norm like you just you didn't tell us anything uh, but yeah, like it just was so annoying and then as I've watched the progressive books come out I've been so relieved that I didn't like it because I think by the time I got to the newest book I would have been It would have still been on this list <laughs> because I just I wanted this really great maiden like fantasy romance intention and I got like gibberish and gobbly goops of like nonsensical plots and I don't need like perfect plotting in my books I'm not like a, like I'm a, I'm good usually but like I need 
some sense. And then not to end with like stuff that just screams weird conspiracy theories to me. That's like a whole other issue I've seen lately in romances though. And I, I don't have, I don't have the time. <laughs> I don't have the time right now to dive into it, but maybe we will at some point. But yeah, I just, oh, I was so disappointed. So disappointed. I felt so betrayed by how many people I knew that loved this book. And I was just like, no, no. Then we have another fave of a lot of people, uh, A Man Called Ove. A Man Called Ove, whatever, by Frederick Bachman. I read this for a book club. I'm pretty sure that's probably the only reason I would have picked this up. I will never read Frederick Bachman again because if I wanted to read about a man, an old man who is so depressed and so miserable and has no joy in his life, I just fucking go outside. I could just go outside and watch men because <laughs> that's how most men around here are existing in like pure looks of misery. And I just, you know, I, I'm good. Like I'm, I'm, I'm trying to live a good life and have a good life and like all that jazz. I don't need to read about a man who's like got really crappy beliefs and like his life wasn't that bad, but he's just, you know, miserable because he's lost his wife. And, you know, <clears throat> I, I guess the lesson is like, don't kill yourself because you can help others. But like, he didn't want to help others. He was, he was a miserable, miserable old man. And I just, he did not deserve a book. The story didn't need to be told. I, I'm sorry. I can just go outside and watch people walk around and do this and be this miserable. Oh boy, I sound really mean. Um, I know it's a lot of people's favorite, favorite book and they find it like very meaningful and all this crap, but like I just, no, <laughs> no, no thank you. Next, we have another very niche romance that I, the betrayal was very big on this. So one of my authors that I really enjoy and again, she's not perfect, very open to, like, I've criticized her books before, like, very much an author that, um, writes these, like, small town romances that I really like, possibly a little problematic at times. Um, so there's this character that we meet earlier on in the series named Justin, and you're just, like, waiting for his book, because he's, like, this computer kid, he's real smart, kind of a hacker, and she said it was coming, it was coming, the book's coming, it's gonna happen, and it finally happened. And she co-wrote it with, um, I think she, co yeah, she co-wrote it with Rochelle Page. Um, it's called Infatuation. It's book four in her Underground King series. And I, I gave it two stars, but like, honestly, even now I'm still mad about this book. So we'd waited and waited and waited. Like the other books had come out. This came out in 2019. And the other books had been coming out in like 2014 and stuff. So like, you're just waiting and waiting for this book and you know, she said it was really hard to write Justin's story, and I understand that. But, like, this just lacked everything every other Aurora Rose Reynolds book I've read has had. Which is basically over-the-top soap opera, like, absolutely ridiculous. Like, the girls are getting kidnapped. It's, it's, I mean, it is up there on the bonkers scale. And it's just, like, over-the-top. And I love it. Uh, and this one was just, like, flat, boring. And it was a character I adored every other time he showed up in a book. And I was just like, what is going on? What is going on? Uh, so yeah, that book, that book betrayed me because I was so hyped for that character. That is like the worst too, when you're really excited for your character that you know is gonna get their own book and then it's just like, ugh, oh, terrible. All right, next. Next we have another uh, popular book talk slash booktube book, popular booktube author. Credence by Penelope Douglas. Everybody acted like this book was so dirty and so like, oh my gosh. Um, and it's not. <laughs> like, she doesn't. Like, I thought she was gonna sleep with all of them, first of all. So this is about a girl whose parents commit suicide and she goes to live with her estranged uncle. Um, and the setup is that he has three sons, two sons, whatever. Anyways, he has sons and they're all kind of close in age and ends up her romance with all of them. Kind of. Kind of. She kind of bounces around. And I was hoping that we were going to like make our way through them all, kind of. Like that to me would have been very taboo and like, wow, we went there. No. No, 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 no. We have like close encounters. And then like she's also 17. So like, you know. That's a whole other discussion. But when she's 18, she and one of the boys do end up like together forever. But yeah, I thought we were headed towards a totally different path. 
and then we just like pivoted to like the shittiest one is of course the boy that we're gonna be with and i just like this was hyped as so dark so taboo so oh my god you're just you're not gonna believe it and i like walked out of that book like that was it that was it y'all told me this was gonna be dark and taboo and it was not it was not that that dark and taboo so um uh, yeah and for my final one, which is why I haven't read another one of their books beyond like some of their problematic issues, I do really enjoy their thrillers. Uh, Survive the Night by Riley Sager, which centered fully around basically a woman being mentally ill and possibly hallucinating everything. I just like, I was so excited for Survive the Night because I just caught up on like his entire backlist. And I was curious to see where we were going and like what his writing would be like moving forward and all that fun stuff. And then I heard Survive the Night and I said, are done. We are out, this is over, we are not reading this anymore. Uh, not for me. Uh, so that's that's why I haven't read Riley Sager again. I would rather read other uh, authors, to be honest with you, because uh, that was disappointing. Survive the Night really hinged on a lot of like really badly contrived um, items in my opinion. Uh, and it just didn't work like it could have been so good it had a lot of potential to be really cool and good and then we just took a nosedive so uh yeah i don't read riley sager anymore because of this i uh i said no thank you no thank you for me so those are the books that betrayed me let me know in the comments the books that betrayed you make sure you check out jess and tamika's video to see the books that betrayed them and um leave if you don't want to do that like well go watch their videos but if you don't want to leave a comment leave me a angry face emoji uh because it always cracks me up <laughs> when i get a bunch of angry faces in the comments so you can do that if you're really curious i will have links to these books in the description box i guess uh and links to be my friend anywhere on the internet and i will see y'all in just a few days bye already packing come with me i'm not really asking we'll get away to a place where we don't know About to see the world in action What we can be Life with no distractions We'll get